Okay, so we're videoing. This is our before. See, we've got our controls set up here. This just gives us a contrast ratio and a contrast ratio. Hi, guys. It's sun. Sun is up here. It's cloudy. And we've got snow everywhere. So the lighting conditions make for the absolute worst conditions on this TV. We are setting the camera on this without pressing because it's soft. We're going to set it here for our test. So here, meaning we're back a hand width at the peak of this couch. Nothing else is going to change. We're going to leave that Sesame Street image. And just We're going to just do, this is before we put in the bulb. Okay, so I'm just getting a couple of different angles. So like this is where I'd be sitting, where my head would be. You can kind of see, so we've got a dinosaur sitting here now, so. You can see the contrast is poor right now. Shh, quiet. I'm trying to film, buddy. Over here, it's really, really bad at this angle. Really bad, you see, and that's a brightness issue. So from this position, it's really bad. So what we'll do is we'll pin this video. We're not gonna close the windows. We wanna see what it's like when the windows are opened. And we have a timer set and it's counting down. It's, a, it's almost 10 o'clock. Well, we're 27 minutes away. So at this point, we're gonna power down only the TV. Where is the remote? Oh. oh, here it is. So we're just gonna shut off the TV. So TV, so now it's off. So now our timer is gonna to continue to run. Obviously we don't care about the blank screen now, but we're gonna execute the change and the light bulb is going to happen. This is what we're putting in. It's a Mitsubishi branded bulb. What did we give, like $65 for this? This has Excuse me, guys. Uh, this has the case around the bulb. You can see it's branded. It's got the serial number. This is an Osram Neolux bulb inside. It is new. Manufacture date is 11 12 of 19. Wow, that's crazy. That was made in November. That's incredible. And then it comes with this information. So. Basically, you don't want to touch the bulb and all that stuff. But this is going to be the whole thing, not just. Wait, is this just a bulb? Comes with good packing. Caleb. Yeah, this has the whole thing. It's the whole housing. So when you get it, you just have to slide it in. It's like the super easiest thing ever. We used to, we replaced bulbs on our old this is a 73 inch, and I know some of you are thinking, why do you still have a DLP TV? Would you please mute it? So we used to replace the bulbs. See how that is? I'm not gonna go in there and touch that yet, but you can see it's an Osram bulb. In fact, I can, I can carefully touch it on the plastic. So you can see how that bulb is opened. The air gets sucked through there and it keeps it cool. So you don't wanna to touch any of this because the oil from your hands will just deteriorate its life span. But you used to have to take these out and it's not hard to do, but you have to be really super careful, which is why you don't film doing it. <laughs> anyway, so we'll show you what goes on with this real quick. And uh, we're doing this mostly for a baseline for ourselves, okay? And then you can see there's a serial number and everything, so it would not be easy to defeat that because I believe the serial number is also on here. 297, yeah, 297, yep. All right, so the next step is going to be to get it into the DLP TV. In our case, um, this is a 73-inch. And the way you tell, of course, we got our Christmas tree up. These are just here for our controls, for contrast, because the light controls on your TVs or on your uh, smartphones are going to kind of change the way that the exposure is set up. It should be right over here. It's 
down on the bottom. It's really hard to see right now with the tree guys, but it's basically it's basically right on the vertical on the back side of that. So we'll come right back and show you getting that in. So once you get the bulb out of the packaging, there's some instructions that come with it that talk about wiping off the lens. The lens is clean. I think they might be talking about the one you're taking off. There's a lens that this goes up against. You should just need like a regular number two Phillips screwdriver to do this. Uh, the worst part of the process, of course, is getting the TV back out. So you can see we put these little markers on the TV to help us to tell if there was enough of an improvement. Our bulb is not burned out on this particular TV, which by the way, we pulled it away from the tree and moved the tree. This is where the tag is right here. So it's always on that side if you've got one of these Mitsubishi DLPs. So this, we've got the link to this. I think we spent about $65 with tax, it's like 61.18 or somewhere in there. So if you have the 82 inch size or you've got the 65 inch size, the model number is also here, okay? So when you go back here, just make sure you don't touch the, the lens. I've washed my hands. If you guys, it's cold, you got lotion or something like that, make sure you wash your hands, get that stuff off. So you take your Phillips and you come back over here. I'm gonna probably have to show them. Yep. Sorry guys. So normally you're doing this in really awkward environment. Stupid auto focus. There's a Phillips screw and a Phillips screw and you can see that there's an arrow that points at it. So that's how you can tell what to take off. So we're gonna get you back to the camera crew. Basically all you have to do is pop these two screws and then you can also see we put some cup holders down here. These are rubber cup holders. And then we have a safety strap, so if the kids would try to pull the TV over. This TV is pretty light. I think all in it might be like, I don't know, 60, 70, 80 pounds, That's something like that. It's not much. I bet it's not that much. Um, new TVs are way heavier, so ironically enough, it's one of the most obnoxious things that we have, and it's one of the easiest things to move. So there's your first screw. And then your second screw comes out easy, and then this whole mechanism tilts out. We've replaced this bulb once. It also wasn't burnt out then. Um, so if you figure on back in the day when we bought this, we bought it for like 1200 bucks. Um, we've had it for a lot of years, probably like nine years, maybe. Yeah, probably so actually. If we look at this, this is where you want to be a little bit careful because it could be like a dust cloud that comes out. And if you're a smoker or if you have pets and stuff, that's always gross stuff like this comes out. So we're just going to lay that out of the way. And then this is the bulb mechanism. So we're going to give you guys a clear shot of that. So the bolt mechanism is here. So replacing this part is really easy. There's only one screw that you have to undo and it's right here. So basically once you get that done, then you're allowed to basically pull the whole assembly straight back out. So you just, it's really hard to film yourself doing it, I can tell you that. But it's actually very easy to do, so camera crew is going to take back over. You just undo, you really only have to undo three screws. The worst part of doing this is that you're back here behind your TV, you're probably dust all over the wall. Obviously we didn't film it, but we had to clean a bunch of crap, dust and stuff. Look at that, look at all the junk in there. Ew. Gross. So I wonder, you could probably take that out and just clean it out. And you can see this is OSRAM. Part number 150-180, that's actually 150 through 180 watts. 1.0E22, there must, there's an R at the end, it's just really hard to see on the old one. This one's exactly the same bulb. So that's good to know, because that's the worst thing, is trying to figure out if you got the right bulb. So we'll keep that in case this one would burn out. So let's let them see inside of here, it's gross. Um, and this is the area where you want to be really careful because the DLP chip, I believe that's actually it. So you can see the little fan that's the impeller there, and then you've got a cooling fan over here, and then that's the plug that's going to slide in. Oh, yum, yum. Oh, goodness gracious. Just get whatever you can get out of there. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. It's tempting to say that you would want to clean that out better. But to be honest with you, the only place I'm going to clean is that little lens. So give me that microfiber cloth, please. 
So this is unused. If you don't have a micro microfiber cloth, get something as soft as you can get that doesn't have a bunch of lint. And then I'm wiping one spot where that lens shines through. So where the bulb shines, you can tell on the new bulb because the light shines this way. So as you slide it in, you'll tell there's just that little triangular angled piece. It shines in there and then it goes up against the DLP chip and then it casts the screen up against that plastic. So I'm going to show them exactly where I'm cleaning. You don't have to do a lot, but you just want to make sure there's not a bunch of debris on there. Okay. Again, this is one of those projects where it's not hard, but it does take a couple of minutes. Let's grab the other type of cloth. This is just a regular rag, just like a dish rag. I'm just going to go for getting dust out now. I'm not going to touch that same triangular piece. And I'm just getting a little bit that I didn't get before. I went through all this with just a wet rag. And you see, it's not like a ton of dust, but it's enough that, you know, it's better. If you had compressed air, there we go. I finally got a good angle where I could get that cooling fan to blow some dust out. So now that that's done, Wiped off one more time on the lens just to make sure I don't have anything loose. And remember, this is all we're going to key in. So as you slide it in, there's just plastic assemblies everywhere. And you just kind of, you just kind of guide it in there. It's not, it's not hard. It's very, very obvious how it slides in. If you're sliding it and you don't feel that purchase where the connector makes contact, you're probably doing it wrong. So just try until you do get it. Okay. So the only thing I'm noticing that's a little bit different about this is you'll notice there's one screw here and then a second screw here. So on my new replacement bulb, I have two screws and I'm not feeling the purchase that I expect to feel. And you can see how there's like a clean spot on it. That's how far it, it penetrates into the connector. Oh yeah, when I pull on it, it's stuck. So that means I'm into the connector. Then I can take my screwdriver and I can just go in here and just tighten these. Yep, I'm getting good purchase. You can feel the resistance of the screw. Okay. And then the second one. And we've done this, like I said before, when we've replaced the bulb. Okay, and the worst part is if you get, want to give them a close up, it's that these these connectors, there's a heat heat resistant thermally insulated line that goes to the connector, and what happens is this will dry out and heat up really hot, and you can see it's like almost black from soot because it's so hot any debris that gets on there burns, and you see that all the dust and collection there, that's what happens to these bulbs. But to be honest, it's been extremely reliable, this TV has. And then this last little bit, we're actually going to pause. We'll just grab a vacuum and suck this stuff out of here real quick. Okay, so we're going to put this cover back on. It's, it's really simple. Now that we're out here, you can see the arrows. I just took a little Dyson vacuum to this. And just in noticing, I kind of missed a spot here on the top. Um, this, this isn't in, insanely critical because the air comes out, not in. This is an outlet. The inlets are over, I believe, on that side. Okay. And it blows through the bulb and then out. So this thing just keys in to these two slots here and then drops back on. Now, if you're dealing with a 65 inch or an 82 inch, which were the other two sizes, they also had, didn't they have a 91 inch as well? Mm -hmm. They're all the same thing. They're yeah. just different sizes. Yeah. And they, I mean, this assembly is almost exactly the same. I think the smaller TVs, um, may have used 150 watt instead of 150 to 180 watt. Um, and that's where you gotta be careful, guys. You get an off brand. There are some off brands that are okay, but we've always had really good luck. We've never had one that we got and it burned out in three or four days. We've never had that. They've always worked for years. On our 65 inch, just like this, the W, 
it was a WD-65741 or something like that. It actually burned out the bulb mm -hmm. twice. Twice. That was back in the day where it was several hundred bucks. But that, that TV cost us like 2,600 bucks. Yeah. And uh, it had millions more connectors and it was a nicer TV overall. But it was smaller. So bigger screen is really what we're after. And But we've never bought like the economy bulbs. We always try and get like the Osram or the higher, if you like compare the specs. Yeah, because the economy ones are the ones that are gonna have your mixed reviews. Yeah. So you gotta be a little bit careful about that. Um, and for what you're saving, this TV, you could go out and get a 72 inch TV for maybe, I would say a thousand dollars right now. But for this, we just spent 62 bucks and we'll have a TV and show the people back here. When we built this house, we got everything set up so we can put our flat flat panel TV. This is this is actually not being used. That was that was our uh, satellite installer cut that off. He walked up and cut it off and never put it back on. So I got to build that back on on the RG6 line. So it's ready to move all this stuff back to our closet. Mm -hmm. So when we're ready, we're ready. But I don't want to spend a thousand bucks. I'm going to wait for the technology to get even cheaper because we love this TV. It's been great. So we're going to get everything back in position and then we'll go ahead and film the after so you can see if there's an appreciable difference in brightness, which anybody who has a DLP knows that there is a brightness difference. When you put in a new bulb, it's going to be significantly brighter. And secondly, when you're watching TV during the day and it's sunny and you got a lot of windows, um, DLPs are, they're actually somewhat better than some other screens because the plastic doesn't get as much reflection. So even though it's inferior in many ways, we've always liked the image. So anyway, if you get the bulb, follow the link in the bottom, uh, uh, actually at the top of the description, and we'll link to what we used in case that helps you guys out. And um, if you go to that and you've got a different size TV, then just search, search for the correct uh, model number. They mm -hmm. should be in the recommendations on the bottom. So if you're not using the 73 inch, you got the 65, then you should be able to follow the recommendation down at the bottom of Amazon. And Amazon's yeah. always been good to us on stuff like this, so it's easy. Um, we're gonna get this stuff back in position, and then there should be one other place where we have to reset the bulb life, meaning that it knows it's a new bulb. And the TV keeps track of the number of hours that it runs, and I believe after so many hours that it might give you a warning or something like this, I don't know. We've never, we've never had that thing save us from a burnt out bulb, and we mm -hmm. never have it save us from a you know, like a dimming effect to where we should have, you know, noticed an appreciable difference and replace the bulb. So if you figure on three or four years on something like this, that's probably a fair assessment. You know, somewhere between two to five years. And it depends on how bright your room is. If you're in a dark room, you wouldn't have even replaced this because it was working fine. It's just in a bright environment. It's, it's washing easier. And our TV tends to be on because we use it for school and I it's on and the kids lot. have kids <laughs> shows on and stuff like that watching that in the background and things like that so anyway we're gonna get things back and we'll come right back and show you those two steps so guys we're gonna prepare to store this um, in in the event of a, of a burnout so I want to show you what I'm gonna do real quick it's it's super easy stuff and basically what this is gonna do for us is it's gonna get the debris out of here just in case we have to put it back in so ah, shoot there we go. See how I'm lifting that, guys? It's just on those pegs and there's a spring tension on it, on this side. And then that, I'm gonna put back in. You see this, this clip? That helps hold the bulb. So if you buy just the bulb, it's not hard to do this stuff, it's just you have to be a little bit careful because you wanna try not to touch any of this. See, that directs the airflow. See how there's debris in there? Probably not the best way to do it. Compressed air would be better, but remember with an air compressor, you're gonna get water and potentially oil in the air. So the best way to do it is to use canned air from the office supply store. Uh, we don't have any of that, do we? Mm -mm, so. Okay. So for us, this is a backup. You know, when the TV goes out, and you've got people there to watch a football game or any other reason, <laughs> do you need your TV? <laughs> I want to be able to fix it. So we actually have two of these bulbs. So if we uh, go into the uh, financial dire straits and our bulb burns out, then we're just going to have, have to go back to an ultra old crappy <laughs> bulb. Um, and yes, we will keep it. And yes, we will at some point in our lives, we may use it. Um, my wife loves my pack or rats. Maybe status. not. <laughs> 
So once you're done with that, you can just do this. Now, if you wanna replace these things, the easiest way is to use a nut driver and then I get a Phillips screwdriver, number two. That's the size P2. This is just a Craftsman screwdriver, it's very common. If you use a number one, you can still get it done, but you'll have to be really careful because these things have been heated up and cooled thousands of times. So they're very easy to break off. So just be aware. And if you do break that off, you have to strip this, you have to buy a pair of strippers and you have to get a ring terminal, okay? But just keep in mind, this is pretty high quality stuff. It doesn't look like much, but anything that's heat resistant, that's designed to be like four, five, six, seven hundred degrees every day, all day long, it's gonna be a little bit different than your run of the mill connector. So that's it. We're gonna put this away. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna put it literally and exactly back into the packaging that it came. And this is just what we're gonna do. And we're gonna write down the date and we're gonna write down what we took it out of. And then we're gonna go put this thing down into the dungeon. The hoarder's dungeon. You don't have, this is an optional step. You can this also is, just throw it away if you're done with it. And then you know what? You don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> so those people that are into the minimalism, like my wife, <laughs> you could do that. I'm but, into not hoarding. It doesn't even have to be minimalism. So now we've got this nice package and it looks brand new, doesn't it? It does. So we're going to mark it. But I'm not going to bore you with that. We'll come right back with resetting the timer. My wife suggested that I show you my awesome note. <laughs> But then my even more awesomer note, this, this lamp is old, but working. We replaced it because TV wasn't bright enough at Newhouse. So now I have to pick up your garbage box and read every side of it to know That's what right. it was. All six sides, except <laughs> for that. All right, we'll be back. All right, guys, so remember, you've been dealing with this bulb. There is mercury in the bulb, so you gotta wash your hands when you're done. Uh, they recommend wearing gloves. That's crazy. Unless you got lots of lotion on your hand. It's gonna take a while to start up. Now, you'll notice I didn't unplug my bulb or my TV. And that's uh, because I don't wanna waste my time. And I'll show you why. But just remember, it's like if you're really dumb, you could probably hurt yourself. So don't do that. <laughs> so I'm turning it on. I press the button. It takes like 10 seconds sometimes for this thing to come on. And really, what we're gonna do is we were sampling. We've got these before and after marks. Now, it's almost noon as usual, it took much longer to do things than we expected. We started this process at 10, so that's been two hours, which means the sun has moved positions. So it's coming up, obviously the bulb is working, it's blue, it's got the welcome screen, but it's probably gonna go straight into the whatever TV show programming is on, and so we have to go see what's going on real quick. Okay, so it's come up, of course we're on channel 11, so what happened was we had paused the TV show two hours ago, and now it's run out of buffer. So. We're not going to be able to keep the exact screen, and yes, we're on an off-air antenna for this particular example. So we're going to pause it and come right back. So my huge plan to show you before and after has kind of been foiled by my own stupidity. I really apologize. As you can see, it's extremely bright. We've got some dinosaur train here for you. <laughs> and uh, we're not going to play that for copyright issues, but what we're going to do is we're just going to show you a still, and then we'll go ahead and uh, just pause it so you can see it's working. And then basically what you can do is we'll put you right in the same spot, which is gonna be right here. Okay, let go. This is the same exact position. We did a couple of different positions. Remember how we had those coasters underneath? So this is kind of like where I sit in this chair and then there's another chair where my wife tends to sit. And you can see it's very bright out. Okay, very bright with the sun out, it's cloudy, and it could be a little bit brighter with the direct sunlight, but with a fresh snow like this, it's about as bad as it gets. And as you can see, before, when I did this angle, here, I'll come over to the other side because I'm running into a bush. Hate it when that happens. You can tell there's a huge improvement because you have to get way over here before it starts getting dark. And you can still see now, keep in mind guys, in the real world, you're gonna get some glares here and there, and you can see the glares. Well, like I said, the way we helped to make the bulb life a little bit longer is we basically, we pointed that screen at us just a little bit. And that was super easy to do, which is those three coasters on each side, and we have the safety that keeps it in position. So clearly it's better. So now we're gonna show you 
how to fix settings. There's a reason I said I didn't want to waste my time to change settings. So on our remote, I'll go to TV. I go into menu and I go to advanced. And then you can see all the different settings. They are not lost. Okay, so my brightness is all the way at the top. So just to show you, look at this guys. I can put the brightness all the way down now. Pretty incredible, right? Yeah, that's crazy. So just to give you an idea, if you had your brightness on anything less than the top setting before, it was extremely hard to make out the TV. So one tip, put it in the middle. I believe it's the middle is 31, okay? And you can just use your up and down arrows. I have mine set up through the Dish Network mm -hmm. remote. Um, but you can change your contrast. See, I'm just gonna leave that up because that doesn't really change much for us. The color and the tint, sharpness, gamma correction. The gamma correction might need to be changed. See that? So it just depends on your taste, depends on your lighting. We're gonna run that the same. And those aren't messed with. Those are the different hue colors uh, adjustments, I believe is what that is. And that's how you can adjust those. So anyway, once you're done, you can just walk out of the menu structure and the TV bulb life technically gets reset when you power down the TV. So you have to de-energize it by plugging it from the wall. At some point, it's going to get powered off because the electricity will shut off to the house and that's when they're going to reset. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care beyond that. If you really want to go through resetting all those settings, then you can go ahead and de-energize the TV. Um, I suppose, like I said, you'd have to work pretty hard to hurt yourself. Make sure your TV's off and it's the same difference and just unplug the bulb, put the new bulb and you're done. And there is a sensor that will detect that cover being in place. If you don't get the cover in place, then it may not work. So just check those things. If you get through the process and you're still having some problems, uh, DLPs historically have had basically two problems. One is uh, the bulb and then the very, 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 very far remote second is the DLP uh, chip. And in our case, we've had a variety of other just like super minor things. Like we had a, we had a moth that came and flew and it was like, I'm flying. And then it went in between our screens. There's two screens here. So we had to take off the bezel and take apart the screen and clean it out. And we used a wet rag and cleaned it and then it didn't dry right away and it scared us like it looked like we ruined our TV. So we did not. And, uh, by watching this video, you probably assume, man, this guy's a cheapskate. Yes, <laughs> I am. Thanks for watching. Come back for more.